Hi everyone, this is Carlos with the Emacs Science Support Team and today I am joined by Joe Renault. Joe is a scientist at NASA Goddard and we are going to work together to submit his resource and show you all how to go about doing it. So here we are on the Emac homepage and Joe is going to submit his tool titled Title Pi. Is that correct, Joe? Yes, it is. Yeah, and thanks so much, Carlos, for walking me through this. Oh, no problem, Joe. So let's go ahead and click Submit a Resource so we can go ahead and submit his resource. So when you click Submit a Resource, that will take you to this uh, page where you can go ahead and submit your resource. And it's as simple as going down the line and putting in your answers to all these boxes. So for resource name, that all is right. where Joe will put the name of his resource, title pi. And then for the resource sub subtitle, that is where Joe will give us a little bit more of a description of what his tool does. So when you submit this in the EMAC um, website, the way it'll look will be it'll have your title, title pi, and then you know dots and your actual subtitle. And the subtitle tells us, the EMAC user, a little bit more about your tool. So here, Joe is telling us that this tool is a software toolbox for estimating tidal heating and dynamics in solar system moons and exoplanets. Pretty descriptive. Uh, Joe, is this the first version of this tool? Uh, this is not. So this is the third version. And does this version have to be the same as the version on GitHub, or is it just for your purposes of tracking? It is a little bit of both. It is more so for the purposes of the astronomical community. So for those of you that have tools like Joe, Joe's tool is very popular in the astronaut, in the community, probably, maybe, it is. Um, it'll help <laughs> it'll get there. It'll get there, exactly. It'll help everybody if you put the version uh, that's on your GitHub. So when you do make updates and then come and change this, we'll know, okay, the reason why so-and-so isn't working is because this is a different version. So there, Joe went mm -hmm. ahead and put the version on his GitHub. So for credits, Credits is that's where you can credit all your collaborators. And Joe is going to go ahead and credit himself. That's fine. And then the description. So here, Joe will actually describe to us exactly what his tool does. So Joe, what, what exactly does your tool do? Yeah, so I'm going to put in a little description I have on my GitHub page, but just describing Title Pi as an open source software, and it's used to make semi-analytical calculations of tidal dissipation. So I have this here in an HTML uh, brackets. I assume that's OK? Yes, yes. If you see down there in the fine print, may contain HTML and limit it to 700 characters. So I recommend that you take advantage of this HTML, because with HTML, you can make things clickable, and it just gives you a little bit more freedom with your description. Now the next part will be the code languages. So as many of you know, especially for, uh, I don't want to say the younger crowd, but uh, the up-and-coming <laughs> astronomers, right, the undergrads, um, yeah. they are very, very big on teaching Python to undergrads. But in the actual astronomy community, not everybody uses Python. There's other coding languages as well. So here, as you are making your submission, it's very important that you tell us what coding language you use. That way, if, for example, I don't know how to use Python 3, I'll know, okay, well, maybe I either need to learn how to use Python 3 or on a different tool, which can be very useful. And if your tool is written in more than one language, you can go ahead and include that. So thank you, Joe. Thank you for writing that in Python 3, making that accessible for people like yeah. me. Now, the next part <laughs> is the logo image or logo link. So here, if your tool has a logo, you can submit that um, either from you know a file in your computer or maybe you have a link some sort of URL to it. And Joe does not have a logo, correct? Uh, I don't, um, but I will have one in the future. So how can I go about adding a logo in after I make this first submission? That is a great question, Joe. So after Joe makes his first submission, he will get an email back from us confirming that everything looks correct. Or if we make changes, we'll also let him know, like, hey, is this change OK with you? In addition to that, he will also receive a unique URL to his tool. And there, if he clicks that URL, it will take you to something similar to the submission page where you can make edits to your submission. So right now, he doesn't have a logo. If in the future he does have a logo, 
he can go back to that email, click that link, and go ahead and put in his logo. And we will make that change. As simple as that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I'm going to go down here and pick my categories. Perfect. So here, categories, also very important. Just like coding languages, this tells us exactly what your tool is used for. So in Joe's description, it pretty much sounds like it's for planetary interior models. And a subset of that would be the physics mo physical models. So Joe went ahead and put in planetary interior models and physical models. In addition to that, because Joe's tool has like, you know, wide expanse of uses, he also went ahead and clicked planet formation and dynamics tools, which is very much acceptable. Here we encourage you to click the categories that you feel your tool performs best in. And if Joe didn't have any didn't like any of the categories we have, Joe could um, click other categories and suggest a new category to us. Sounds good. Yeah. So <clears throat> next part, the about link. So here in the about link, again, it's another chance for you to really, really describe what your tool is doing. Most people put in their readme from their GitHub, or if you have a unique website for your tool, you can put that in as well. So I'm just going to use my readme here. I'm going to copy this link over. Perfect. Simple as that. Now, the next part right. is the ADS abstract link. So TitlePy does not have uh, a paper or an ADS abstract link associated to it yet. But when it does, or for you, if your tool does, you can go ahead and put in the abstract link, the ADS abstract link for your tool and its associated paper or poster or whatever you, whatever it has. And then as more and more people cite your tool, the ADS abstract link will be, will show up as a button on the actual homepage. And that button will tell the user how many times your tool has been cited, which can give you an idea of how popular your tool is or how old your tool is. So the next part is the most important part, right? The public resource download link. This tells us exactly where to go to download your tool. So Joe, where can I download your tool? So uh, the best place is just straight off the GitHub page. I'm just going to copy this down here. Perfect. It's available. Awesome. So now, interactive Jupyter Notebook tutorial link. So here, if you have interactive Jupyter Notebooks um, in your GitHub, or not interactive, sorry, if you have Jupyter Notebooks in your GitHub and you want to implement them into our website, what you can do is go over to mybinder.org or a similar site. So Joe already has that tab open. And then there's three fields where you're going to input in some things. So in this GitHub, you will simply put in your GitHub URL. Mm -hmm. And then in the Git riff, you will, if you visit your GitHub, it will tell you if it's either under a master branch or a main branch or anything like that. This says master. So in the my binder, we'll just go ahead and type in master. And then Joe, if you go back to your GitHub. Mm -hmm. So Joe's GitHub has this demos folder. And in the demos folder is where all of your actual notebooks are. So what Joe's going to do is he will copy the path to the notebook, to the notebook. Joe will copy the path to the folder where all his notebooks are stored. He'll go ahead and put that in and then he'll hit launch. And then it will create an interactive Jupyter notebook for you. And all you have to do is copy that URL, come back over to the submissions page and paste that in. And now when this shows up, easy, as, easy peasy, right? When this shows up as a button, mm -hmm. it will open up a, an interactive Jupyter notebook interface that will have the, that folder and all of the items inside that folder, making it really easy to use. Awesome. Yeah. Now, Joe, you had a question about this web interface link? Yeah, so I don't have a web interface or a demo uh, video link um, for TitlePy right now, but I see that there's a button that you can say that you're interested in a new web interface. So is that a service that Emac provides to the submissions? Yes, yes it is. So um, it's actually a great service. So if Joe wanted to take TitlePy and make it more easily digestible with a web interface or like an app, if you will, what Joe can do is click that interested in a new web interface button, that little box, and then 
when we get our email saying that we have a new submission, we will see that and we will email Joe back saying, okay, let's get started on this. How do you actually want to go about implementing this? And so with a web interface, instead of all the complicated code, it's literally just like boxes or you know places where you put in your parameters and then you spit out a plot or whatever your tool does. So it makes your tool very easy to use. So if Joe wants to interface, he can click that. And then us, the EMAC science support team and the EMAC, you know, everybody at EMAC will work alongside with Joe to create this web interface. Does that answer your question, Joe? Great. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a really cool service that you provide because that makes software much more accessible. Yes, it does. Now, Joe, do you have any related tools? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Um, so I think the first one here I'm going to put is actually on Emacs. I see Dwarf mm -hmm. already. And then another tool that I uh, use quite a bit in Title Pi is Burn Man, which is an interior modeling tool. So those are both two awesome tools <laughs> to, that uh, I've used quite a bit. Cool. And you know what else? These names sound like they would make great nominations for the Emac he's going on right now on Emac on Twitter. So while we're doing this, if you have a tool that you want to submit between now and Sunday, and it has a cool name like, like this or like Title Pi, go ahead and submit that and maybe um, it will be a nominee to win one of the very, very extremely fake prestigious awards titled the Emacies, the end of the year superlatives. So last thing. Yeah, this can be my push push to have all the viewers vote for Title Pi. Yes, since yes, you're yes. watching this. Yes, <laughs> yes. And if you want to vote for Title Pi, just go ahead and use the hashtag Emacies and tell us where it should be nominated. So last thing, Joe's just gonna put in his name, his email, and in the submission notes, if he has any notes for us, like say maybe, you know, I really want to make this a web interface, let's push through it, or you know, anything like that, he can go ahead and leave that there. He's gonna write Carlos is a genius, which has not been scientifically confirmed, but there's theories out there. Um <laughs> A lot, of that, people are, a lot of people are saying it. A lot of people are saying it, yeah. <laughs> so now that Joe has completed everything, he will go ahead and hit submit. Just click that button right there. And that will take you to this page where it tells you that your submission has been received. So the next steps will be we at EMAC will get an email saying we have a new submission. We will double check. Everything looks correct. We will make edits if need be. And then we're going to email Joe with that URL where he can make specific changes himself and we will confirm that everything looks the way that Joe wants it to look or the scientist and then we will publish and it's as simple as that then you'll see your That's super easy yeah then you'll see your cool awesome tool featured on the EMAC homepage so Joe thank you so much for for working with us today thank you so much for showing off your cool tool and um, yeah, that's uh, that's easy as that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, peace. Okay. Thanks a lot.